like it, Mom. So be on. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service today. Um, today you can follow along in your green hymnal or in, on the screen. I know our confession of forgiveness will be on the screen to be in our worship service. Um, but thank you for joining us. And then after worship, we'll have coffee and Sunday school. So you're invited to join us for that. But we can begin with the confession and confession and forgiveness. So blessed be the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Now, dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to the new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'll invite you to please rise for our opening hymn, Praise the Lord Almighty, hymn 543 in the green hymnal.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have For the peace from above, from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. And for this holy place and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty and merciful God, your boundless goodness fills us creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us that whole and well in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson today <clears throat> comes from 2 Kings, from uh, various uh, verses in chapter 5. Naaman, this, a Syrian general, suffers from leprosy. In this passage, Elijah miraculously cur cures his illness, but only after Naaman realizes, with the help of his servants, that he also needs heal healing for his pride. This foreign general then acknowledges the sovereignty of God the God of Israel. Naaman, the commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to, to a, Aram. The man, though a muddy warrior, warrior suffered from leprosy. Now the, the Aramians, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and he served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death, or life or death, that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elijah, the man of God, heard the king of the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted the entrance of Elijah's house. Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me, he would surely come out and stand and call in the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned away in a rage. <clears throat> but his servants approached him and said, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something different, would you have not done it? How much more when he said, he said to you was wash and clean and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan. According to the word of the man of God, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy and he was clean. Then he returned to the, to the man of God and all his company and he came and stood before him and, and said, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Here ends the first reading. Let's read responsibly Psalm 111. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. 
He gives food to those who fear him, and he is ever mindful of his covenant. Yes. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. He sent redemption, redemption to his people and commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of The second lesson today comes from 2 Timothy, Timothy uh, chapter 2, uh, verses of, of chapter 2. When Paul is chained as a prisoner, <clears throat> the word of God is never shackled or confined. In this letter from Paul to Timothy, Timothy is encouraged to proclaim that word of freedom is an honest and upright life, as well as in his teaching and preaching. Okay, with verse 8. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, that is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Jesus Christ, the eternal glory. The saying is sure. If I have died with him, I will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. And he cannot deny himself, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, highly, ex rightly explain, explain the, the word of truth. Here ends the reading. Please rise. So on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he had saw that he was clean, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Christ. Please be seated. I'll invite the kids to come forward. Good morning. Everybody's wide awake, aren't you? Well, that sounds like an enthusiastic endorsement. Yeah. But I know this has never happened to you, but when I was younger, if somebody gave me a gift, 
my mom would say to me, now what do you say? You say thank you, don't you? It still happens? Your mom still has to remind you sometimes? Yeah. All the time? Yeah. Well, that's one of the things our gospel is reminding us of today, is the importance of saying thank you. Here we have Jesus giving this great healing to these 10 men. And he highlights the one who comes back and gives a loud thank you. Now, I'm assuming none of you, when you receive a gift from your grandparents or anything, fall down at their knees and start proclaiming thank you, thank you, thank you. But that's what our Samaritan did in our gospel this morning. He was so happy that God had given this gift of healing that he had to come and bow down and say thank you, thank you, thank you in a loud voice. Yeah. Have you gotten any gifts that you've received that you wanted to yell thank you really loud? Yeah. Sometimes. Do you want to share any of them? No. You got a gun for Christmas? Yeah. It's a surprise when you open it. Yeah. I still remember my first one. You know, but we receive special gifts and we want to say thank you. And so here in our gospel, we are reminded to say thank you. That when we, that God gives, God gives us many gifts. Because how many of you can breathe in? Try it. How many of you can breathe out? Yeah, you can breathe, right? Yeah, you have the gift of life. You have the ability to breathe. We can give thanks that God has given us this. And some of us may be better at math. Some may be better at reading. Some may be faster at running. But we all have different gifts. And we give thanks to God for this variety. Because with them all, we can do all things together. Do all things together with God. Because that's the way God has made us. So as we go out today, I want you to be thankful. Think about the things you're thankful for. And think about who you can say thank you to. Think you can do that? Yeah. Even if it is a sibling, think you can do that? Do you know what siblings are? Brothers or sisters? Yeah. You have one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all the gifts you've given us. We ask that you would guide us and protect us. Remind us always of your presence so that we may give thanks constantly. All this we pray in your holy name. Amen. Well, thank you for coming up. I'm glad you're here. Yes, I always loved that growing up, hearing that, now what do you say? Yeah. And then it became even more interesting when it was me who said, now what do you say? Yeah. Well, reading through our lessons, though, on top of the idea of thankfulness, I thought about the idea of who is God calling to follow him? Have you ever thought about who is worthy of God's love? Or if you're worthy of God's love, who's in and who's out? We start off our Old Testament reading with Naaman, a general of an army that comes and attacks Israel and takes Israelites prisoners to be slaves back in his homeland. Yeah. Is this something everybody wants? Yeah. This is not a friend of Israel. Yet Naaman comes, presents himself to Elijah, and what does Elijah do for him? He heals him. This man who has attacked Israelites has received the gift of healing. Jesus later on uses this in his ministry to point out that we don't always know who God calls to be saved, who calls to be part of us. When he says it was Naaman, a foreigner, that was healed by Elijah, when there are plenty of lepers in Israel already. And then we come to our reading for today. We see Jesus walking in the borderland between Samaria and Galilee, the in-between area. 
not defined by right or wrong, left or right, the in-between. And here he comes upon, in this in-between area, 10 lepers. Now, leprosy was a hard disease to have. Not only did it make, make you physically ill, not only was it painful and uncomfortable and sometimes caused body parts to fall off and death, but it also meant you couldn't live with anybody else. You couldn't see your family. You couldn't see your friends. You couldn't even get close enough to look somebody in the eyes other than those who had leprosy with you. You were completely separated from society. No physical contact. Yeah, in our Bible study, we were talking about that. I can't imagine having a time when we didn't have any contact with anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have that experience of when we didn't go out of our houses very often. We didn't gather for worship where we could get close enough to one another to see eye to eye. And remember when that all changed and we were able to come back together for worship the difference that it felt to be able to see our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors, our friends face to face. That awesome feeling of being seen and seeing others. Just a small glimpse of what these lepers were going through, completely separated from society and everyone they loved. And now they could re now. They're out in this wilderness, this in-between area, and they either see Jesus approaching or they hear about him coming, and they have to go and shout out, Great. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They're shouting this out from a distance because, again, they can't approach him. They can't even be like those who have come and said, if I can only touch the hem of his robes, because they were unclean. They couldn't come near anyone. And then Jesus just said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. Go and show yourself to the priests. Know you're healed. Know you're forgiven. Just go and show yourself to the priest. Go and follow the right ritual order in order to be pronounced clean in order to return to society. Here the lepers heard this, go and show yourself to the priests. And they immediately left to go to the priest, to go and show themselves, to prove that they were worthy to once again see their family and friends. And as they're going, they noticed they were healed. But only one returned to Jesus. The other nine kept going. Now, I can't imagine why the other nine kept going. Maybe they were just being obedient because that's what Jesus told them to do. Maybe it's because they really wanted to go see their family and friends, to be able to hug their children one more time, or hug a spouse or a mother or a father, and they were just so excited that they could go and do something. But they left they went to show themselves to the priest. But here we have one who turns around, who comes praising Jesus with a loud voice and comes down and throws himself at Jesus' feet, giving thanks. And here we have Jesus recognizing that the one who fell down before him was a Samaritan was somebody who was unclean in the eyes of the Jews, who was an outcast, who was unworthy to be talked to or even seen. And here Jesus had healed him. And even more than that, now we hear Jesus say the words, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. We see the Samaritan being lifted up as an example of our response to God's gifts to us as a people who give thanks. 
Think about the breaking down of barriers we have here. Here we are between Galilee and Samaria, between Jewish lands and Gentile lands. Here we are with lepers, those who were unclean, and Jesus who was clean. And finally, we have the one who came back to say thanks was a Samaritan, someone completely rejected by Jesus. I'm always amazed when the Gospels bring us stories like this because so often in our world we like to think about who is in and who is out. Who do we like? Who don't we like? You know? Thinking about today, you know? Do you root for the Packers, the Bears, the Vikings? You know? We like to separate ourselves by groups. And here Jesus is saying that Those are the wrong separations. The way we look at each other, the way we look at the world is to see who does God love and how do we love them. I mean, this is a great feeling if you're one of those who aren't sure if you can be loved by God. If you think, whatever I've done makes me unworthy, wherever I've been in the past, how can God forgive that? This is good news for us. God forgives us. God calls us to be his children, no matter matter where we've come from or what we've gone through. But on the flip side, it's still the challenge to remind us that we are called to love the world, everyone around us, all those that God has created, all those that God has given the ability to breathe in and breathe out. To breathe in and breathe out. Yeah, this makes it pretty easy to figure out who's in and who's out, isn't it? You know, we look at a world where it's so easy to divide ourselves. This group and that group, followers of this person and that person. And here Jesus makes it simple. You are loved by God. You are ones who have been worthy for Christ to die for. And everybody you meet on the way who's breathing in and breathing out is worthy of that same love. Jesus changes. The gospel changes the way we see the world. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's hard. And many times it takes practice. But the gospel calls us to change the way we see the world. Because here it is, a Samaritan leper who's bowed down at Jesus' feet, who Jesus declares his faith has made him whole, has made him well, has saved him. This outcast, this foreigner, this one who is not to be acknowledged, Jesus acknowledges. So we give thanks for that. Thank Jesus sees us and calls us to follow. We'll experience that in just a few minutes as we see this gift that Jesus gives to the whole world for the forgiveness of sins for everyone, that this gift is for you and for all people. Amen. And now we'll continue with our hymn of the day, O for a Thousand Tongues to Sing.
And now I invite you to please rise if you are able and let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now in gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops, pastors, deacons, and all church leaders. Inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your saving faith may be known to all. Hear us, O God. And Lord, you are majestic. We give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation and watch over farmers as they bring in the harvest and care for the land. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is Lord, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of all those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or live in isolation. Send your healing touch to all who suffer. We especially pray for those in our community, Cheryl, Arlen, Faye, Don, Steve, Alan, Gary, Sharon, Helen, Lorelai, Ricky, Don, Jerome, Linda, Roger, Cheryl, Ricky, Mary, Brad, Misty, Melanie, and Marcy, and all those who name in our hearts, We also pray for all those who are grieving this day, giving your comfort and your strength, and most of all, your peace. Especially pray for the family and friends of Diane Sari, my aunt. Hear us, O oh God. And faithful God, we give you thanks for all the ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit and care and pray for those in need. Give insight to doctors, nurses, home health care aides, and all practitioners of the medical arts. Hear us, O oh God. In eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promise of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O oh God. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share his peace.
please rise. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and, and praise. praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all the drink, saying, This cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And now let us pray as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever. Amen. The table is now ready. You may be seated. shine on you and be gracious to you. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. Lord bless you and look upon you with favor. Amen.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his eternal grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with, with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Yes, I'm still getting used to Lutheran aerobics. Please rise, please sit. At least we don't do kneeling yet. Um, a few announcements. Um, Sunday, on Wednesday, we'll have our Bible study at English at 9 o'clock. Um, and that'll be live stream there. And then at Contribute at 1 o'clock. And then confirmation today will be, or confirmation this week will be a trip to the banquet. And so we'll be picking the kids up right after school and getting ready for that. So pray for us on that journey. Um, we'll have worship with, and communion at Contribute at 8.30 on Thursday. And our saviors will have their circle meeting at circle Bible study at 9 o'clock on Thursday. And then next week, we have 8.30 worship at English, 10.30 with service at St. Olaf, and 9 o'clock at our Saviors. Our mission of the month is the Walnut Grove and Dovery Fire Departments and Ambulance Squad. Um, we do have a holiday fundraiser for our youth, which is a wreath, so you can talk to any of our junior, senior high youth about that if you'd like to purchase a wreath. And then on October 29th, um, Faye Hansen from English is turning 100, so if you want to mark your calendars for that. Um, our Savior's Welka is doing a project, Love Thy Neighbor project, and for feeding kids. And Okay. And then one other announcement, um, we're starting to make this public. I know we haven't been hiding it, but making it more public is that we're working, talking with um, Trinity and Walnut Grove about creating a four-point parish. And so watch for more information as we go on that. I know our, count, our uh, councils will be meeting in a few weeks to talk about it at a whole council meeting. Um, but if you have any comments, questions, um, I invite you to talk to myself or Pastor Stephanie or one of the council members and see what's going on. And so any other questions, any other announcements? Um, the nominating committee will meet in the oh, yes. church right after so nominating committee will meet in front of the church right after worship for a few minutes. Yes, it's really hard to believe that January is coming right around the corner. Uh, oh yeah, I've already skipped all the way through that and started planning for the annual meeting. Yeah, that's where my calendar is. But yes, um, nominating committee will be starting to meet. Okay. Well, then I'll invite you to please rise for the blessing. The God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Spirit, or Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. We'll close with hymn 534. Now thank we all our God.